um, the, the sisters in the hijab who are making it in the newsroom, who, are, who have really worked very, very hard and are successful journalists. But there is a barrier with white converts. Now, I know we're a minority in a minority, so if you, if you were going to say we should be represented in journalism, we'd still be 0.0001, so I'm not saying... But it's so hard to present that to the public as, like, I'll tell you what it is. When you're not Muslim, if somebody's brown and Muslim, it's okay, because they can do their weird stuff, and it's all right, and we'll accept it because we're diverse, mm. aware. But if somebody's from the culture here and chooses to go to believe in Allah, that's too much. Any more questions from the front? Is it too much from the media or the community? Um, I think it's too, it's too much for the media to, to discuss in 250 words, which is the space that you have, because again, we don't do God. And I think that's a mistake. I think there is, you know, all around the world, people are. I was speaking to somebody, actually, it was Ash yesterday, who's on the. Um, who, who's, uh, who does the show on talk radio with James Whale, and he said, do you know what, amongst the Jewish community, the youth are coming back to their faith. I said, mashallah, it's really good. So there is an awakening. The worse things get, the more people are looking towards faith for answers, revisiting and hopefully finding their faith. And one of the misconceptions is that Muslims only want people to be Muslim. No, we want you to have your faith. Just sincerely believe in it with ethics. to raise the issue of sectarianism. You mentioned it very briefly mm. in the book. I, just want, I know it's a kind of a very painful experience for you, but you think maybe it's getting better now? We are sort of at a post, post-traumatic moment in terms of I think I want, to, I, want, I want to speak about this from the viewpoint of someone who put their head to the ground and said, there is no God but God, and cried, thank you, and I'm sorry, at the age of 43. And then came to the realization that all of this is made by a beautiful, benign creator. And we're all, we're all one family from the same mother and father. And that we're definitely one ummah. And how beautiful that is. And then for people to say, so are you Shia? Now, that can be if they're not Shia or if they are. But not to ask, are you Muslim? Not to say, how is your Islam? Not to say, how are you liking Islam? Or, you know, what's your experience of Islam? Or what are you looking for in the faith? But are you Shia or Sunni? That really, really, I could cry about that. And I was in Iran in March this year. And I was in the foyer of a hotel with an esteemed uh, sheikh, maybe he was an ayatollah, uh, a very esteemed uh, member of the fraternity there. And he was saying, you know, you should be Shia, you should be this. And I just made a dua and I said, please, Allah, let us stop this. Let the brothers stop this. Because we're killing each other. Because we're killing each other for nothing. It's wrong. And definitely, definitely, don't you dare do it to people who come to Islam. Don't you dare try and politicize our relationship with God. That is wrong, whichever side you're on. You know, nobody owns my faith. That's between me and God. And nobody has the right to to make sectarianism more important than belief. Is that something you think is now very prevalent in the UK? I, or I think it's it petering out. Isn't it something we're all confronted with in yeah. civil society? Where, you, know? you tell 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 me. I mean, I mean, you know, you're you're very connected with the community. I think I'll tell you what I noticed when I went to Iran in 2010. Um, I didn't. I didn't. You know, I, I, I didn't notice that people would say, come to Shia Islam. But when I went this time, nobody was happy that I was Muslim. They just wanted to me to be a Shia. It wasn't enough that I was Muslim. And, and that really shocked me, and I, and I gave lectures on it. And I said, stop, why are you doing this? Why are you not happy that I'm here as your sister? You're my brothers and sisters. You're my brothers and sisters, inshallah. So I do think that we're being pushed to a worsening 
uh, schism. And I don't know where that's, that, that, that for us is just discomfort. For many people in the Middle East, it's <coughs> death and homelessness. Well, certainly, I mean, we've done a lot of stuff at IHRC, for example, in Indonesia, with a whole division of Shias were killed off of the sectarian damage in Islam and so forth. And it was, as you said, completely pointless. And I mean, we do have these news. You can and, mention, uh, like, the ones in Syria. Iran. Look what's happening. Look, we've got Syria and we've got Yemen. Mm. No, they're just being decimated, the people there. And I don't actually care who's doing it. I just ask Allah to stop it. Is that something you want to sort of tackle when you give your talks, or is it a lot of us, at least in the UK, are just like, well, well, it's just not even any point at starting with a conversation that just goes pet shaped as soon as it is, you know? I, I, think, I think when you're, when, you, when, you're, when, you're, when you're either young or you're fresh to the faith, I think we are the people who should be speaking about unity. Because it's not, we haven't been culturalified into, you know, I know that's not a word by the way. <laughs>